So now I'm going uh, to look at this other aspect of property, quantity. Though of course this is not separate from quality. Uh, in the modern world, we are constantly transposing quality and quantity. We use digital devices to measure qualities, uh, colors, temperatures, speeds, weight, and such things. And we give these alphanumeric names, which are much of the time almost impossible to speak. These are some of the ways we represent quantity in text where some numbers are too long to say and some equations too complicated. And let me jump to speech for a moment. Uh, only a few numbers are speakable in spontaneous speech and memorable for the purposes of later speaking, like the 36 apples we just counted on the tray or the year 2020. If we need anything more than this, we have to read it out, which is not the same as speaking in the normal sense. It is a multimodal practice reliant on text. Quantity can also be represented two-dimensionally in image, three-dimensionally in space, uh, in the physics of objects, in the sensations of our bodies, how they feel and as temperature, and in sound, in musical notation, which represents fractions of time and levels of pitch. A and here is Gottfried Leibniz, uh, the great 17th to 18th century philosopher and mathematician. Uh, now Leibniz had a fantasy that if all meanings in the world could be expressed in numbers, every truth in the world would be determined mathematically. Then he said famously, where there are disputes among persons, uh, we can simply say, let us calculate without further ado uh, in order to see who is right. Moving forward now into the 19th century, we meet another mathematical genius, Ada Lovelace. She had inherited her love of mathematics from her mother, Anna Isabel Noel Byron, the 11th Baroness of Wentworth. Anna's husband and Ada's father was the poet Lord Byron. Ada's father dismissively called his wife the Princess of Parallelograms. Dismissiveness like this has been the fate of women thinkers like these women for a long time. At the age of 18, a Ada Lovelace was introduced to the inventor Charles Babbage at one of the high society soirees uh, he regularly held at his home in London. She was attending with her mother. On display in the drawing room of Babbage's house was his difference engine an elaborate mechanical calculator. Ada was transfixed. This began a long professional association between Babbage and Lovelace. They worked together, uh, culminated in 1843, with the publication by Lovelace of a 20,000 word journal article about Babbage's design for a new analytical engine. Lovelace simply signed the article with her initials a A L. In those days, who would have imagined that this was written by a woman? Over a hundred years later, one of the main founders of modern computing, Alan Turing, turned up Lovelace's largely forgotten article and was able to build on some of her key propositions. Here are some of the words Ada Lovelace has used in her article. And I'm sure you will agree for someone writing in 1843, these words are remarkably prescient. So she says, uh, by mathematical representation and calculation, it may be possible to express the greatest facts of the natural world and those unceasing changes of mutual relationships which visibly or invisibly, consciously or unconsciously to our immediate physical perceptions are in terminably going on in the agencies of the creations we live amidst. Lovelace continues, uh, she says, the analytical engine weaves algebraic patterns just as the jacquard loom weaves leaves and flowers, she said. In these ways, and I'm continuing to quote her now, not only the mental and the material, but the theoretical and the practical in the mathematical world are brought into more intimate and effective connection 
with each other. The model for such mechanical possibility, Lovelace went on, was, quoting her again, the principle which Jacquard devised for regulating by means of punch cards the most complicated patterns in the fabrication of brocaded stuffs. Lovelace was truly another modern genius, imagining how the qualities of the sensuous world might be transposed into the quantities for the purposes of their representation and communication. Ada Lovelace had imagined how in the future in which you and I now live, we might be able to build machines which manage the transpositions of quality into quantity, 